got about 15,000 kilometers or about 10,000 miles or so just under on this service that I did. The oil still looks pretty much new. You can tell it's been used, but it looks really good. Haven't lost a drop. Haven't burnt a drop. Nothing's leaking out. And that's what I like to see. That's what I check every morning. I want to make sure my motor is doing good. It's the most important part of the truck. Good morning. Another, another one is here. It's hot. It's hot. Roll the windows down. It's hot. Whew. I really like this time of year. It's very easy for me to get up in the mornings because I can't sleep when it's hot. Excuse me. Just turned my key off. It likes to let me know that my key is off. Anyway, I can't sleep when it's hot. It has to be cold. Uh, my wife is the, is the same way. And maybe she sort of, sort of helped make me like this a little bit. Because our house, <laughs> in order to sleep, she always had to be really cold at night. And I've gotten so used to that. And I sleep so much better when it's cold. Uh, however, in the truck here, I, I shut everything off for night, right? I'm not going to leave the truck idling overnight if I don't have to. So uh, I just got the screens in my windows and uh, just the airflow. But at this time of year, the airflow sort of seems like a heater more than uh, anything else. So I always get woke up first thing in the morning by how hot it is. And then I'm ready to go for the day. I just have to make sure I get to bed on time. Otherwise, like, I'm not getting very much sleep. <laughs> How are you guys? Do you guys like sleeping when it's cold, or can you sleep in the heat? I cannot sleep if it's if it's too hot. Won't sleep at all. We've got about a 9 to 10 hour drive ahead of us today, crossing into Canada. This is Summit, South Dakota. Really nice truck stop we got here. pretty much everything in these truck stops. Everything you need. It's all marked up in price a little bit because you gotta pay the convenience tax, right? Because it's easy on and off for trucks, there's truck parking, everything's right here. So everything is a little bit more expensive than you'd find maybe at like a big store like Walmart or on Amazon. Uh, but it's that convenience tax. You know, it's very convenient. You pull in, you grab your fuel. If you're fueling, you have a shower, you grab a donut, you grab a meal. There's a casino in there if you're into that. Usually they have like a restaurant and lounge. Anything you need for your travels. It's, it's very nice. straight west from Summit, South Dakota on US Highway 12. And then we will head straight up, which I believe is US, is it 52? It is once we get into North Dakota anyways. And you go through North Dakota and you sort of wiggle your way up towards the Saskatchewan border. I welcome these raindrops. I would like a free truck wash. Fantastic. As long as there's no tornadoes. I follow the some storm chasers from the Dakotas, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. Manitoba, where I live, is right next door to North Dakota. So this is my region here. As right? so I follow their weather weather reports. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. There was two tornadoes spotted in one weather system. The camera panned from one side. There was a tornado touchdown. And then they panned over to the right, and there was another tornado that was just about to touch down, like a couple miles away. So I, I, I welcome the rain, especially since I didn't get a chance to clean my windshield this morning. Whoops. 
You're lazy, Trucker Josh. <laughs> I know. Some days I am. I actually, I would have cleaned it, but I didn't even think of it till I was already on the road. And I'm like, oh, I got all these bugs on my windshield. I'm going to get all these comments now. Clean your truck, Trucker Josh. <laughs> I don't know why why Mickey Mouse wants me to wash my truck so much, but he's always in my comment section. <laughs> Believe me, I like to have a clean truck too. It bothers me when it's dirty. I, I'm a, I love to have a clean, clean truck, but it's just not always possible. She's a working truck first. I can't afford to bring her to the Blue Beacon every day. That's expensive. It's between $75 and $100 every time you go to the truck wash. So I go maybe... Uh, I like budget for myself to go once a week and if I can I have all the materials I need in my shop to wash the truck if I can I wash the truck at home it saves me about 100 bucks Canadian because it'll be like $80 American and it'll translate to very close to $100 every time I go and it adds up I would love to bring it in there every day maybe one day we'll get there maybe once uh, YouTube gets big enough I'll be able to afford that Gotta sell some more t-shirts. So we've been going up US 218. That's the road I was thinking of before. Into North Dakota, and uh, we're just coming up to Interstate 94. Beat you to it, Karen. So this here, I believe, is the city of Bismarck, North Dakota. We have to go on a truck bypass around the city because they don't want us going through so you can see there on the sign west 94 that way also the truck route for west 52 and north 281 we're taking north 281 but following west 52 in the end that's what's going to bring us up to north portal arrow is weird to me because that's different than how we do it in Manitoba but all that means it's it's like a solid green light for us Manitobans it, it means you can turn left but traffic coming this way is not gonna stop you got to yield to them in Manitoba that would just be a regular solid green not arrow a solid green light if you got a green arrow or a flashing green arrow that means it's a protected left turn same thing it's pretty self-explanatory here for two miles and then we're back onto the two-lane highway all the way up to our destination in Saskatchewan it's the only four-lane highway we'll see today that's not quite true sorry just thought of it there's a little bit of uh, four-lane divided just north of Bismarck here and closer to Minot but we can say this is the only interstate we'll see today how about that <laughs>
Carrington, North Dakota, getting some sun showers here. Just picked up a coffee. I'm going to head up to Minot. I want to stop for a shower at the Flying J. About two hours down the road. I got you mounted up on my dashboard there, so you know what that means. It's time to speed things up. Let's go. This road for 38 kilometers. Dakota. Just up ahead there is North Portal, Saskatchewan. Those bright lights right there, that is Canada. We're still on U.S. soil here. Got all my paperwork ready. Got my passport and stuff here to show them on my ID. Let's go home. Sort of. I'm not from Saskatchewan, but let's go to Canada. I'll see you on the other side. If you're wondering why I don't film at the border, uh, we're not supposed to, we're not allowed to. US side especially, they're very picky about that. They really don't like it, don't do it. Uh, the US side, you can get into trouble. I think it's frowned upon on the Canadian side, but the US side, 
if you like film going up to the window, they're going to get very upset with you. You even have to take your dash camera off your windshield when you come up to the U.S. Customs. Uh, I've been asked to remove that off my windshield and turn it off uh, before they'll talk to me. And if you go on to the U.S. Uh, Customs website, it does say there that on U.S. federal land at the port of entry, you're not allowed to film or record audio like when you go to their booths there and stuff. I think the idea is to prevent teaching ter terrorists how border crossings work and how you get across. I don't know. That's what I'm guessing. But yeah, uh, not allowed to film there. Don't do it. You can get into trouble. We've come to the end of the road on this trip. Literally, I'm at the customer. It's too dark to show you outside. You probably won't be able to see here. I'll turn the headlights on. There you go. See, that's the sign right there that says receiving that way. So I'll be here first thing in the morning. They get here at 7, so I'm going to get myself up at 6.30. And uh, I'll take it from there. I called ahead to ask if I could park here. Uh, make sure you do that. If you're a new truck driver, one tip I can give you is if you want to sleep at your customer, make sure you get permission uh, and ask first. Is the worst thing is if you get to your customer and you, you know, you run out of hours on your e-log or, you know, you get there, <laughs> you're in the sleep and then they tell you you can't sleep there and you got to leave. Uh, a lot of places they don't want you to sleep there, especially down in the States. It's a little more slack up here, especially in the prairies of Canada. Everyone's a little bit more easygoing, but it's not like that everywhere. I called ahead, asked if I could sleep right here and... First in line, here we are. So 7 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to be getting unloaded. And I uh, might be going home from here. Uh, oh, we shall see. I was hoping to get one more load in this week yet, but... It is what it is. Oh, what is tomorrow? Uh, what's the 19th today? So, I thought there was a truck show on this weekend. The truck show's next weekend in Steinbeck. I'm really hoping I can make it to that, but it, it all depends on my schedule. I need to keep this truck moving. And we've had a lot of doctor appointments and stuff in the past month or two. It's really slowed me down in getting miles. Oh, man, I'm really fighting that yawn off this whole clip. I uh, just let her out, let her rip. Man, yeah, I gotta keep this truck moving. I'm hoping to be there, though. I'm hoping. 90% uh, sure I should be there. We'll know more next week, towards the end of the week. But anyways, uh... Thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. Thanks for telling your friends about my channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, share it out on your social media, uh, whichever social media you like best. Uh, tell people about Trucker Josh. And uh, let's see if we can grow this channel and do something even bigger. There, it, Yeah, there is 116,000 subscribers that have people who have chosen to subscribe. And those are all legit. I haven't, you know, I don't even know how one goes about getting fake subscribers but uh no all of those subscribers are people who decided to follow me they don't all watch uh but uh we're averaging well about ten thousand views per video and that's pretty cool if you think about that that's that's quite a few people there's quite a few out, of, out quite a few out of quite a few of you out there who liked <laughs> who watched me every day and i appreciate that very much appreciate that very much and uh if you like it, maybe your friends will like it too. Who knows? But you guys are pretty pretty faithful and loyal. Uh, we got that faithful audience that is there every single video. And, uh, you know, one of these days I've got to make a real, real thank you video. Because I do appreciate it. I'm going to sleep now. I'm so tired. We'll talk to you in the morning when we're going to unload these tires.